had some technical issues. Kake and Ricardo are currently sitting in an airport um, trying to connect on their iPads. Um, it would seem that live podcasts aren't supported on iPads and iPhones. Um, we've also got Tom Putt potentially joining us. Uh, but again, he is on an iPhone and in a car. I think his wife's actually driving or someone is. Um, so if you try and make it difficult, then it's not going to work. And it would seem that it's not going to work. So we'll, uh, we'll just go with the three of us and, uh, and have a chat to uh, Antonio and basically have a discussion about different competitions. And if the other guys want to join in, uh, then they can do it at some point. Um, so my name's Lee, uh, as you, I'm sure you're aware. And um, I will, so the sort of format for tonight is that we're going to, um, I guess we're going to interview and we'll, we'll try and cover all the, mostly Australian uh, competitions, but there's also international ones as well. Uh, but basically, uh, why do we enter competitions? Uh, maybe what, what prizes uh, there are to be won. We'll talk about cost. We'll talk about rules. Um, there's a kind of a common um, conception that it will bring you fame and fortune, which is not always the case. Um, and something we've got to remember is that all photography competitions, or most of them, are run by photographers for photographers. So, um, you know, the public might not necessarily see the results, or it might not be um, the best marketing tool, but, uh, you know, some competitions are better than others. Anyway, we'll have a chat, and um, if you, you should be watching it really on um, over on Free Photo Guides. There's a link on my Facebook page and on Google+. Plus. Here you can also ask questions. Uh, there's a sort of Facebook feed at the bottom of the page. So uh, just jump in with any questions you have there, and I'll try and cover them as best I can. So um, just to introduce yourself, guys, Antonio, uh, do you want to say hello and just say a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, what is there to say? Um, I'm My passion is landscape photography. been doing it for about 25 years now. Um, yeah, current New South Wales landscape photographer of the year through the AIPP, and um, current director of the International Loop Awards and the Creative Asia Awards. Sorry, so you said what's your involvement in those? I'm current director of the International Loop Awards and okay, the Creative cool. Asia Awards. Well, you're the perfect person to have on this interview. Um, well, this hangout. And uh, Jerome? Well, I'm on my uh, third uh, hangout with you, Lee. So, Jerome, I'm uh, based in Sydney. I'm a seascape and landscape photographer. Uh, and uh, I'm just getting into the world of uh, competition, so I wanted to come with you as a moderator mm -hmm. as well as some questions and uh, being a bit the uh, devil's advocate around competitions. So, here we go. Yeah, just um, as far as my own experience, um, I have entered several competitions. I can't say I've won anything notable or haven't really won them. I've won awards. Um, I've won bronzes in the in the uh, APAs and New South Wales awards. I've had a silver um, with distinction. It's probably my best result. Uh, and I had a 13th in the open category of the Epson Pano Awards. So... Uh, really, I'm, I haven't entered too many competitions. It's probably my second year of doing it. Um, and I think I'm just my choices are becoming a bit more selective um, just to do with what the results are, what the what I want to get out of them, and uh, what the competitions actually sort of uh, represent. Um, okay, so just, uh, Antonio, as far as um, competitions, what do you enter uh, on a yearly basis? Um, there's there's a there's a few competitions. Probably the, the most important, which are the Australian awards, such as APA um, through the AIPP. You also have the the state awards through the AIPP that I enter. So they're the two major ones in Australia. Um, then you have the Australian Base Company, which is the International Loop Awards, which also branched out two years ago into the medium format section, which which was which was my creation. Um, so basically, I enter my own awards at the same time. Um, and the other major overseas event that I enter is probably WPPI, which I just did very well in. Um, I got, uh, I don't know, it was four gold awards in landscape. So 
I don't know. Just the four gold. I'm sure you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I dirt. Yeah, and what did that actually get you? Uh, four gold seems quite a good result. Yeah, but see, the, the judging system at WPPI is completely different to Australia, whereas um, they only take your two best images and then they put them up against other people in other areas. So what necessarily gets you a gold at WPPI doesn't necessarily get you a, um, a, a grand award as such. So whereas in Australia, in APA, you know, your four best prints, you know, whether it be two gold or two silver distinction or whatever at APA, could be good enough to, to win you the category in landscape or commercial or whatever. And it's not like that at WPPI. It's a completely different scenario. It's a completely different... Different. Uh, mm. Can you see him, Jerome? Uh, it's just a completely different business model when it comes to... Sorry, we lost you there for a brief second. Just the last sentence. I think everything else was fine. So um, you pretty much aim high these days uh, and not not so much of the sort of other ones. Um, I, I know when I spoke to you last, you said you were entering just the Appers this year, not the New South Wales one. Is, um, is um, that right? Well, there's... there's there's a there's a couple of problems this year with new with with state awards and that is that that um there's there's a different judging system being implemented in the the state awards this year um in terms of the system they're actually using to judge um there's still going to be five judges but the difference is this year that there's um the actual system in inputting the scores is a completely different system this year it's all going to be handwritten again. So, um, yeah, so, and plus, having already won the New South Wales Landscape Photographer of the Year twice in New South Wales, I think my focus would, I just want to focus on the judging side of things and, and educate, you know, the up-and-coming guys and, and things like that. So, I, I think I would, I'm, I think I'm just going to settle to, to judge this year, so, and I'll just enter APA. Cool. So, um, it seems like you're judging quite a few competitions, um, if it's not got your name on it, well, in fact, most of the competitions, if not all of them, have Peter Reesway's name on them. Yep. Um, so, I mean, is this something you wanted to sort of fall into judging? No, not really. It's just, it's, it's just something that, unfortunately, it's I had a passion for because I was, I was, I was taught by the industry's best when it come to Photoshop, which is, you know, a good mate of mine, Daniel Capabianco. Um, him himself and Les Walkling are probably two of the two of them, the purists of Photoshop, if you would say, in terms of teaching people the correct techniques. Because unfortunately, a lot of images these days, um, with the lack of experience in Photoshop and knowledge, are actually, the, the images are becoming very noisy and very, very color, a lot of color noise in their images, and their sharpening techniques aren't the best. So when I learned all that through Les and Daniel, I decided to, you know, I wanted to go down the path of, you know, educating people on, on what a, a good image is in terms of technical quality, so. Hey, Antonio, yeah, I, just, um, sorry, just picking up on this, um, looking at the different awards that people can enter, you know, you seem to have kind of two big categories. You've got the AIPP where you would have things printed, but then now you've got a number of online kind of competitions and obviously it's different because you judge a print or an image on a screen. Sure. So the competitions that you enter mostly are on prints, right? That's correct, yeah. And in terms of pro post-processing, do you find that different? Oh, look, um, you know, entering online competitions as opposed to print competitions, are the, it's, it's a completely different animal. Like it's, um, I find that Anything online needs to be oversaturated, almost HDR'd with a with an over exaggerated effect. Then, on you know, print competitions such as AIPP, the APA Awards, and WPPO in Vegas, um, your images have to be technically sound, well printed, nice subtle tones without the without the over exaggerated effects of HDR and you know, over sharpening and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, there's there's a definite there's there's a 
yeah, there's a there's a definite difference between online and and print competitions. So, so the the different what the, the the reason why I was asking the question is because I'm um so me personally I'm in a different position. So you know, you've mentioned that you've you've uh, been around landscape photography for twenty plus years. Yeah. Um, I've started semi -pro professionally only last year. So uh, to me, visibility, online business, all that was kind of the priority. And competitions are just kind of uh, something that I'm looking at now. And sure. um, when you, for, for everything that is online, I agree with you, very saturated, very colorful. Yeah. But now I'm preparing for the AIPP and the part on the print. You know, looking at what the guys produce as well, even of choosing the media on which it will be printed seems very sure. important. Sure, absolutely. I mean, do you I, like textures, or uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, or what's what's your favorite sort of papers for that? Um, I look, you know, there's I, my favorite paper in the whole world is made by Canson, so I, and I think they're the best photographic paper in the world at the moment, bar none. Um, yeah. My two favourite papers at the moment are probably the the uh, the Canson Platine, which is a semi texturous uh, cotton with a with a fine gloss to the paper, um, which gives you very rich 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 blacks. Um, and my other favourite paper is the the Photographique, which is a very fine cotton. It doesn't have much texture to it. It's a very flat paper, um, but holds its color gamut very, very well. I haven't seen, you know, any, any other papers such as the Platoon or the or the Canson that holds its color gamut as well as, you know, the Canson does. So um, they're my two favorite papers at the moment. Cool. Um, so let me just see what else I had to ask you. Um, do you think there's a certain mindset of judges? So, um, you know, like to win these competitions, you kind of have to think, like a judge, and um, is it sort of uniform across a panel of judges? Oh no, it's it's never ever uniform. There's you know that's the whole reason we're having five judges, you know, because you get such a broad range of you know feedback and tastes and dislikes and likes, you know. So there's never ever. I mean, if an image if an image is good, or if an image is great, you know, there's there's always that average amongst five judges that. You know, there's there's either someone up at 95 or there's someone at 88, and the guy that's at 95, the judge that's at 95, has the capability of talking the guy up to a gold that's on 88. So, you know, you, you gen with a very good image, you generally get you know an average you know score scoring range of about four to five points. You shouldn't get any more than that. You know what I mean? Unless it's a very controver controversial image. You know. So. Um, Yes, there's there's a big range in some prints, and then if it's a very very good image, then the judges come together and they see the quality in the image, you know. So, so for as far as people entering, you, I mean, do you think it's worthwhile uh, getting in the mindset of judges and trying to think, well, what would the what do the judges like? I'll take an image like that. I think that if you're going to get into photography and worry about what judges think, then you shouldn't get into it because the problem is. That even myself at APA three years ago, you know, you go in, if you're going to go into the the awards thinking that you know I've got four images there and I've I've thought like a judge and I've got all the clarity, I've got all the detail, I've got all my highlights, you know, then you're never ever going to do any well. It's about you taking that photo you want, keeping it simple, keeping it keeping it easy, keeping it to what you love, and then entering in the awards. Then if it bombs out, it bombs out. If it does good, it does good. Simple as that. Like it's there's no hard and fast rule as should judges like your work or should judges not like your work. It's just you know it's what's important to you at the end of the day. I think you can kind of see for the AIPP though. There's a I mean I don't know what you guys think, but um, I've looked again at the different winners of the last years. I mean especially in the landscape category because that's you know what we are most interested about and there's some kind of like look and feel that kind of comes back that is very AIPP. In fact, something that I found quite funny is if you look at the, um, the winners, every winner in the last three years had a photo of a tree alone on a hill and massively post-process. Uh, Jackie Rankin had it, 
uh, Christian Fletcher had one. And then you, f you look in the goals, so it's really funny because there's this type of image that seems to kind of come back. So, you know, obviously not going into saying that the, the advice would be to come up with that kind of photo, but there seem to be a kind of look and feel that kind of comes back within the gold. Would you agree with that? Sure. I mean, the last couple of I mean, I've spent I've spent numerous amount of times with Jackie Rankin and Christian Fletcher, and we've 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 spoken about you know individual styles and and whatnot. And with people like Jackie Rankin, you're always you know she's always going to be pushing the boundaries. You know, like there's her images over the last few months have all been about a hand in a photo. Um, yeah. that that's Jackie. You know what I mean? Like. That's her interpretation of a landscape. That's her interpretation, and if judges like that interpretation, they'll they'll score it accordingly. You know what I mean? So, I mean, admittedly, and I told Jackie this myself. I, I didn't I didn't like any of her images last year, um, and I wasn't asked to judge landscape at AI at Apple last year for for other reasons that I want to discuss tonight. But um, you know, because I'm I'm a very hard judge, and I expect you know. A landscape to be pure, you know what I mean, somewhat without the, without the textures and without the hands and without that sort of stuff. But so maybe you know. because of the saturation of you know images for everyone, they kind of picked a, a concept that was a little bit different. That's correct. Um, I mean, Antonio, you need to be opinionated to be a judge, really. If you didn't have an opinion, then you wouldn't do very well. So no, that's right. Uh, yeah. So it's good to you know have an opinion and um and you need to voice that and uh, everyone does have an opinion and um you know it's yeah. not always the same I guess one thing I find funny is um there's a few images that have won and they have that sort of, I think you had one as well it's got a frame or like it's cut the image is cropped in a sort of uh, window frame that's uh something quite unique is it I mean what did is that when you photos you did that one no I don't think so I've I'm no, I don't think it was mine. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about, though? Not really. It's like not think... square, but it's kind of rounded and uh, like a window. You're almost looking through a window. Oh no, no, it's not mine. Definitely not. It mine. was. Um, it was a photo of um, Milford Sound in New Zealand, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that was taken. I think that was taken from by Paul Gummer, I think. That but that kind of goes in the direction of that, you know, kind of concept, like coming up with something a little bit different. Yeah, well, Paul Paul Gummer took out um, Australian landscape photographer of the year a couple of years ago, and the frames, the frames, like the mats around his photos were all, you know, shaped like that and curved edges. And I mean, you know, he, he was probably keeping within the theme of where he shot. You know what I mean? Like if it was the Middle East, he probably had something looking like a Middle Eastern window or something. I, I don't know. Like it's, you know, it's people's personal choice and. If it looks good, it is good, I suppose. So it's funny. Um, I mean, sometimes, well, definitely as photographers, we all think our images are are amazing, or you know, at least we do for a couple of weeks, and then we we start to uh, not like them so much. Uh, do you think you need to detach yourself from 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 images sometimes, as far as your uh, an emotional attachment to them? Yes, I think a, an emotional ta attachment to your image is a very bad thing. <laughs> Trust me. How do you uh, stop stop that or get rid of it? Well, I think is what you got to do. I think you've got to be man enough, or you got to be womanly enough to accept criticism from your peers. And I yeah. think you need to. I think you need to put your image out there and say, look, you know, what's right with this image and what's wrong with this image, and be accepting to the the criticism that you get. So, if if you can accept criticism and you get to take constructive criticism and implement it on the next photo or or on the photo after that, then you're one step closer to being a better photographer. I, I definitely agree. Like, um, you know, because everyone put, puts their heart and soul into some of these images to hear something that's maybe not not as favourable, uh, you know, it's kind of a kick in the guts. But that's why you have the likes of Flickr and everyone sort of pats themselves on the back and uh, it's a big love fest. There's no real, um, you know, cr critique as such. Um, there's a, a question actually online um, regarding 500 px. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's some weird stuff going on there uh, with dislikes. And do I mean, do you subscribe to 500 pix much? Do you think it's a worth worthy exercise? Oh, look, I 
look, I'm, I'm part of 500 pixels, and the reason why I did that is because it expands your, um, you know, get get your name out, out into the broad world of, you know, photography, I suppose. Like, you know, you get enough likes and stuff like that, and people get to know who you are. But I wouldn't take too much out of 500 pixels, to be honest, because a lot of the photographers that are there are, are bloody amateurs, amateurs. So, um, you know, you get people coming up to you, you oh, can you please have a look at this image and that image? And, you know, it's one of those websites where, you know, people are just stroking each other's egos. Hi, Carcat. We've, uh, we've got somebody else online. That's good. Can you hear us? Okay. Missing the sound. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him hopefully soon. Just picking up on this for 500 pixel, like I, I tend to uh, agree with with, um, with Antonio. The problem as well, like all the the uh, online platform, is that when you look at the photos on 500 pix, it's a very small square, and uh, it has to be again like very saturated, very colorful, so that it, you know people uh, kind of gets their attention and then look at it. There's a, there's a complete BAs on it. You have excellent photographer like Kristen Fletcher, for example, who really likes his work, and he doesn't really do well on website like that. I'm getting really bad echo from someone, Luke. Yeah, I've just uh, turned car kit off. Uh, can you mute or, or put in headphones, car kit, please? Okay. I'll keep him muted until he does that. Uh, and I think he's just got the speaker on. Um so, I mean, what, as far as purist competitions, you know, there's, there's a sort of um, divide in the photography competition world. Uh, there's some more purist uh, where, you know, no, um, no Photoshop or digital editing is allowed, such as um, uh, Anzang. I, I went to enter the Anzang Awards and I realized I couldn't enter anything other than uh, the black and white and the you know, the, the far out RT, whatever, composite ones, because I had done multiple exposures or, or a sure. uh, an exposure blend. So what, um, I mean, what's your thoughts on, on the competitions like that? Do you think there's a need for that, sort of the two sort of separate things? Well, look, number one, um, the day and age of digital photography has turned Photoshop into a, an evil necessity, unfortunately. Um, the reason for that being is that, um, as everyone would agree, I'm sure, that a digital file is a very, very flat file straight out of the camera. And you, it is not possible to print a photo straight out of a camera onto a bit of paper without it looking like crap. You know, the, comp the composition may be there, you know, all the, all the other stuff might be there, the lighting and everything like that. But unfortunately, digital files are very flat and need that and need that caressing in Photoshop to bring out the tones and the and the clarity and you know the sharpness and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I look, you know, I, I think there is, I think there is a, um, you know, a, a market for those sort of competitions for people that are are still shooting film out there and whatnot, and and there, there's still guys out there shooting film. I mean, Matt Loud is one of them. He, I mean, he's not really made the the connection to digital for for that reason. Like he, he, he loves the feel of film at the moment with landscape still. So, look, there's there's always there's always going to be a um, there's always going to be a market for for that sort of photography for sure. I mean, those guys are still doing uh, you know, multiple exposures from their their film and uh, then blending them in Photoshop. So, yeah. I mean, there is still a, an element of a, a digital workflow there, but I guess that's um, nobody really wants to do it in the dark room anymore, or or yes. very few people. Sure, I think I think the problem is these days is that you know I've I've studied photography at university and, and TAFE and whatnot, and. I, I still believe to this day that a lot of photographers don't understand their equipment enough to um, to be taking great photos, and and what I and what I mean by that is, if you ask any Joe Blow photographer out there how their camera works in terms of capturing capturing the image inside the camera, they don't know that you, you their camera cap, captures the image in a black and white in a black and white format, and then you know adds blue green you know 
RGB channels to the actual filters. Yeah, you know, your, your actual image is captured in black and white, right? In the in a digital camera, and then the filters process the colors. So, you know, there alone, if you you know, you need to understand how your camera works for you to, for you to get the optimum performance out of, you know, any image that you want. So, and is our medium format camera right behind you? Other side? <laughs> no, that's my that's my fiance's Nikon. Oh well, that's not so exciting. No. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far you know, in, in competitions, a lot of um. The kind of uh, you know, especially the Epson one, uh, Epson panel awards. People were sort of up in arms about everybody getting us uh, a bronze award. If we look at the, some of the stats, um, there was three thousand eight hundred entries. Uh, Two thousand eight hundred of them approximately got bronze awards. Um, I mean, that's to say it's of award standard. But um, do you think it's a, a good benchmark for people? Um, you know this uh, sort of rating system that we have. Well, um, no, not really. Look, there's 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 a few problems with online awards. Number one is that, you know, not everyone can afford a two and a half thousand dollar monitor to color color cal calibrate their images to a ninety nine percent, you know, within within one percent of, yeah. you know, what they should be. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that um, people enter digital awards because they're too lazy to print on paper and it's and it's an easy avenue for them to you know exploit their images or get some feedback and you know hope, hope hoping to win awards so um, you know Nathan and I through the loop awards have discovered that you know over the past few years that um, you know digital online entries are uh, you know, they're a specific market, you know, and we're getting you get you get a lot more amateurs into those and and that's that's where the market is. Like it's for online amateurs and you know, if, if professionals want to put their images in, so you know, so be it. Well done, you know, good luck to them. But you know, it's it's a specific market. So So um but I mean, you know, this uh so a bronze is a sort of award worthy image and uh uh, so I, I guess silver would be something to aim for. Or guessing one silver, multiple bronzes. Um, I, I guess people enter these competitions sometimes in the wrong mindset, and um, you know you, you can't expect to win everything, but you, you need to figure out what you want to get out of the competition. And I guess that's why I only enter a few of them now, and a, a bit more selective. Um, well, can you can you just excuse me for one second? I just got to say good night to my son. One sec. Sure, go for it. I mean, just speaking on that, um, Lee. I mean, to, to I, I've been around for, for a fair bit of time now, and um, I've basically never entered oh, any over the last year. Yeah. And uh, the yeah. main reason being that uh, I don't like too much the the online. Sorry, guys. It's so all right. Kind of doesn't work that much um, for me. And the AIPP. Uh, which is probably the ones that I would like to enter. I just wanted to get my head around, uh, you know, what it is and the kind of work that you need to produce and what you want as a photographer to get out of it. So, if visibility sure. is what you want, um, in my opinion, maybe it's not the best um, kind of investment. If you think AIPP, I, I mean, Antonio could confirm, but you know, most of my mates would spend a, bit, a little bit less than a grand for a, an AIPP uh, entry in between prints, tries, uh, you know, posting, having the case, uh, the membership, mm. etc. So if visibility is what you look for, you don't necessarily think that you've got gold material or to shoot really high up, then spending that grand on that specific competition is maybe not the best investment. So this is where I came from originally. Now I've got a different mindset because what I would like now is I think you know, my style has evolved a little bit, and now what I'm after is not the visibility, but the judging, uh, and, you know, see how it fits. So I guess you need to have kind of your objectives around it. That's the reason, you know, for me why I only started into competitions very late. Sure. That's, I mean, that's um, the sort of situation I'm in. I, I've spent 800 a $1,000 entering the New South Wales and APA awards, um, and you have to ask what, what do you want to get out of it. And for me... Um, 
and I, I really want to ask Antonio this is, you know, if you do get the sort of New South Wales Landscape Photographer of the Year, or you get uh, highly uh, rewarded or um, awarded in the APAS, is it all of a sudden people are banging down your door to give you, um, you know, this career in landscape photography, or uh, do you still have to go out and hunt it? Uh, look, you know, no, no doubt that, you know, being landscape photographer the year twice in a row is, you know, certainly great for the ego and all that sort of stuff and certainly gets you the, the first look into a commercial job and, and helps you sell images, no doubt. Look, you know, without, you know, with saying that, I, I, you know, I found that it was, you know, the, the first year was, was almost, you know, a, a more of a, an ego stroking thing where, you know, you were more realised by your peers as being one of the best in New South Wales. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and for your peers to judge you at a high level like that, it's sort of a coming of an age of yourself and, and realising that your style and the, the effort that you put into your, you know, photography is actually going somewhere. So, um, for that, it's good. Um, no, it doesn't get you any more work, I don't think. But agree. Um, but yeah, you're still going to go out there. And so we're losing you a little bit there. Um, but do you? So I mean. You know, now you do these tours and uh, things like that, and you're doing judging. I mean, have you? Is it you that's gone out to them, or have you been approached? No, no I've been approached. Like I, I sort of, you know, as much as I want to keep my finger in with the AIPP and and do do a lot of things with them, I've I've been approached, uh, which has been good. Yeah, so that's exactly like the sort of situation I want to be in, or um, you know, it's something for me to aim for to get. Accreditation. I, I've never studied any photography, so it'd be nice to get, um, you know, associate or well, hopefully sure. get associate this year, and then a master photographer or whatever, um, you know, in the future. I guess it's a different type of investment as well. I mean, if you think about it, short term versus long term. If I think AIPP now and the grand that it would cost me to enter and do that properly, and what if I use the same, you know, one thousand dollars to invest in some sort of you know good smart Facebook advertising in terms of the number of people I get to workshops I reckon the online will work better but long term if you start to do well and kind of question your style through what you're doing in renowned um, competitions then you get to where Antonio is where I think you kind of build a network as well so it depends on the yeah. it's a business decision at the end of the day how do you want to uh, how do you want people to see you in the future? Um, like, for example, I had uh, Living Social call me asking if I wanted to for uh, uh, asking me if I wanted to sell my courses to them, and I, I said no because it would lessen the product, and uh, you know they're m marketing these really cheap courses to tens of thousands of people, and it's not really what I want to be known for. I want to have, you know, uh, these more exclusive courses and doing these more interesting things, more arty photography, not just sort of pumping it out. But um, again, that's and it's more long term, uh, long term investment. Or mid -term yeah. Long -term. So it's long term, and uh, where do you want to position yourself in the future? Um, so that's that's a lot about the sort of apples. What about some of the other competitions? Um, uh, I, I did actually enter head on this year. Um, oh yeah. Are you judging that? Um, I've been asked to judge us. I won't be judging though. Okay. Um, I don't know how well you know my work anyway, so um, that's probably a good thing. Um, <laughs> but I seen, what, I seen, yeah, I seen you work the other night. Yeah, I know. I was like crying on the way home. <laughs> 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 no, it was good and um, it was all valid and I de definitely appreciated it. And now I look at it and I go, God, uh, you know what, Antonio was right, what was I thinking? So um, hopefully my entries are going to be better for it. Um, why I entered the head-on? Well, because it's a sort of more local to Sydney um, competition, and I think to win that, um, you get coverage in the likes of Sydney Morning Herald, and, um, and it attracts a lot of local interest. So as far as uh, what I want to do and uh, promoting selling photos rather than courses is um, it's a good thing. 
I also entered Anzang. Um, there's a few like Anzang and BBC Wildlife Photographer of the Year. I guess have a bit more credibility in in regards to uh, not not having heavily processed images or composites and things like that. Um, yeah. I mean, do you ever do you follow those at all? Um, not really. Um, Anzang is something I've heard of a few times, but I've I've had brief brief looks at it, and it's just not anything that's really interested me. Um, head on, I you know I've just been asked to judge the last couple of years, so yeah. I've just I've just not really worried about entering. So um, for me, it's about it's not so much the um, the competitions anymore. For me, it's about you know networking with people and. And, and having a look at other people's images and, you know, teaching them about, you know, what I know and that sort of stuff. And, you know, I mean, you, I still get a buzz out of putting my images into APA, you know, for the fact of, you know, the camaraderie you get with all the other peers and stuff at APA and, you know, you get a gold or you get a silver distinction, you know, it's, it's happy days, you know what I mean? Like that's, you, you put in for the, you know, essentially is what you're doing when you enter an award. You're asking people to... To be a, a you know critic of your work, basically, and you're putting yourself out there for that. And if you're not prepared for that, which some people aren't, some people are emotionally connect themselves to images, you know, and then and get hurt along the way. So, um, so Jerome, um, so you have entered one competition and you won it. Uh, do you want to just tell us? Uh, what that was and uh, what the sort of results of that has been? Yeah, so look, I was, I've always been a bit of a skeptic of competitions. It's, it's never been my thing. As I said before, the AIPP is the only one that kind of interested me and I'm going to enter this year. You said I, 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 I did look at the judging in the last two years and did attend the judging session for landscapes to, to you know, look at what's happening. And then I got pushed by one of my mates last year saying, look, but, you know, we both... Um, I uh, look at Capture Magazine, which you know, I see it as one of the, the good magazines in Australia, for photography, and I said there's this top emerging uh, competition going on, and that's uh, for people who have less than four years of professional experience, but who do want to become pro. And so I've entered that and uh, um, ended up being the runner-up for um, Landscapes. It was a you know, very good outcome for me. So in terms of, rate of uh, success ratio, it's quite high at the moment. Uh, so I think I'm uh, due for my... Uh, Reality check, I think, at the AIPP. So I'll probably start by uh, New South Wales, and then um, I'll try to enter the national ones as well. So, um, so in terms of um, feedback, we're quite similar to Antonio. Look, uh, the, the advantage with the magazine competition is that pretty much everyone, a lot of people in Australia see this magazine. Anyone interested in photography would have seen it. And uh, But I didn't get much out of it, apart from my you know, own satisfaction and the feedback from the judges, um, I can't say that it generated any kind of business. What was, however, funny is that I, I organized some sort of little marketing thing, again, online for workshops, like a, a few weeks after, and then I said, ah, oh, actually, you're the guy who was who were in, the, in, in the magazine. So not directly, but people did remember the, um, the finalists, basically. Um, I, I think I, there was a discussion on my Facebook page a while ago, and um, basically the outcome of it was that, uh, and it was Tom Putt that actually said this, that you know winning these awards means very little unless you use it to market. So you, sorry, you market basically market the shit out of it was what he said, and um, so it, you need to get on the phone and phone your local newspaper and say, look, I've won a silver award at this this award and, and basically use it as a press release and, uh, and get it out there to, to people. Um, I guess there's an expectation that this will, it will bring you fame if you win or get close to the top. Like, um, as I've seen, I, I came 13th in the Epson thing. I thought, well, maybe, maybe there's something that get, might get picked up. Um, and again with yourself, but I think it's, it's a sort of a tool we can use to market our own businesses. Um, so just in, we've just got a few more minutes until we finish up. Uh, Antonio's about to go to sleep, so um, no, I'm good. <laughs> um, just general, um, if we're you know looking at any competitions online, what are the rules we need to look out for? Um, so one would basically be make sure you retain your copyright. That is the number one thing, and a lot of competitions will actually ask. Um, 
to transfer the copyright to the, the, the owners of the competition, which is just crazy. Um, have you any other bad experiences with competitions? No, not really. I've, um, yeah, no, I haven't had any bad experiences, so... I guess a lot of um, a lot of them actually use competitions to basically source free images for marketing. So again, uh, if you want, um, uh, some competitions say we will only use your image to promote this competition, which is fine. Others say we can use your photo to market our business however we want. So um, again, read the terms and conditions for that. Uh, also, with the sort of more serious photography competitions, just look out for um, whether you're allowed Photoshop or not. Um, the guy in the UK, amazing photographer uh, David Byrne, uh, who was banned, or sorry, he came first in Landscape Photographer of the Year um, in the take, it's called Take a View competition, but he came first and then the, the award was actually taken off him um, because he had composited a sky. And it was an amazing photo, and uh, really for me, I would say I don't care, you know, it's, it's a good photo regardless. And do you remember this story as well? I can't remember which competition it was, but this photograph of um, a wolf jumping over a fence. Photograph the BBC, um, Wildlife Photographer of the Year, yeah. That's right, and banned as well because it was a domesticated wolf or something like that. And <laughs> the thing to actually jump like a dog. Is that right? Um, I, th I think I heard that, but I mean, I did see the photo went around with the awards. But um, the, he'd, I think they'd, they set up like triggers and stuff to just automatically take the photo as the the wolf jump over. But yeah, if it's if it's partly domesticated, then it's it's not allowed, which is just crazy. I thought but, it was a pretty a pretty funny story, but it was a, f a fantastic photo, beautiful photo. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. Is there any good resources out there for finding competitions? Uh, somebody asked. I, I mean, I, I would say stick to the ones that you know. Uh, word of mouth probably works best. Um, you know, going out and finding competitions. These competitions are generally not serious photography competitions. They're more about marketing and getting happy snaps. And um, I mean, you, you you might win these, but just re uh, read the terms and conditions carefully to uh, make sure you you retain your copyright and uh, see what they're going to use the images for. Um, as far as picking images, uh, Jerome, how do you go about picking images for a competition? Well, I guess, I mean, as I said, I haven't entered um, many of them, only two so far. Um, main difference would be if it's you judge on a series or individual photos. You see, for example, for Capture Magazine, the, the interesting thing is that uh, you had uh, comments from the judges and you were judged on a series of photos, and one of the top three comments was that you have to be careful not to have uh, a photo that was weak. So there were many portfolios which were, you know, had two, three really good photos judged on five, and the fifth one was was just not up to to the rest of the um, of the pack. Um, and then for individual photos, I guess it, it depends a, a bit of the style of. The competition for the AIPP, for example, I think what I will pick will be different from what I've picked before. Um, last year for capture for uh, online for the online competition I entered. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Antonio says just you know take the do the photos that you want, but in reality, I think uh, I am slightly biased um, and uh, influenced by maybe photos that I think would win rather than. Just the photos I like, but uh, it's difficult. I don't know. It's a difficult decision to make, and um, I guess I, th you know, I think I, I, yeah. I, th I think Lee, it's very important to establish your own style of photography. Yeah, definitely. R rather than you know, forge forge your style on the back of some other photographer's work, and because it becomes, you know, I've I've seen so many people try to you know to copy the styles of Christian Fletcher and Peter Eastway. And all they do is just a really bad job of it because it's not their style. Yeah. The Christian Fletcher. Yeah. Sorry. Go yeah. Pe pe people like Christian and Peter haven't developed their styles overnight. They, you know, they've been in progress for the last thirty-six bloody years for crying out loud. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you constantly, you know, um, create your your style every day, every image. 
So to say that Peter and Christian have created their styles overnight, it's just simply not true. You know, they've they've created their styles. It's been an evolution, you know, with their images. And for people to, you know, other photographers to go and copy, try and copy that style, well, I just I just think they're idiots because, you know, you should you should come up with your own style. So. I think it's one of the hardest things about photography is to try and find your own style just um, and not be influenced by other people, definitely. Yeah. It's interesting to see as well the, um, you know, their feedback because um, I remember, I think, reading something about um, Christian's entries like two years ago or something like that and you, know, you could feel that he was getting a little bit frustrated until he actually won the IPP um, as landscape photographer of the year with photos which were a little bit different from you know what he's presented before, a bit more edgy, a little bit less kind of clean looking. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought it was very interesting to see you know even that um, for them with uh, more experience, there's still this kind of uh, <laughs> Thinking process about what to enter and how to present it, or yeah. even Peter Eastway recently, I think in one of his newsletters, he was talking about one of his Iceland photo, on which he got a comment where, you know, the, the light wasn't quite bright on a part of the photo, and that he took a little, he took it a little bit personally to start with, and then realized that it was probably true. So I guess yeah. this is what personally I would be looking for with the IPP and try to interact with some of the people there is getting that kind of feedback and you know, so that makes you think a little bit about how you want to improve things. Look, I, you know, my, my first app, which is about I don't know, eight years ago now, you know, I, I nearly give photography up. I, I didn't even get over 68 for my first score. So, you know, <laughs> you've, you've got to take that criticism on the chin and, you know, you've, you've, got, to, you've got to feed off that, off that criticism because if you don't, You'll, you'll, you'll become a very bad photographer straight off the bat, so... Well, I mean, it's not... I think, yeah, at the end of the day, competitions aren't for everyone, and uh, and it's the same if you don't... If you if you think they're too expensive, um, then maybe, you know... Um, uh, uh, photography competitions, uh, so I believe, are not a money-making um, exercise. They, they don't generate a lot of money, according to um, uh, Dave uh, uh, Epson um, Panel Awards. He was a... Uh, Cutting down the price on my Facebook, but basically, yeah, it's um, not a money-making exercise, and um, but you know they're not for everyone. And uh, if you don't, I guess if you don't like the criticism, then it's maybe not the the forum for you. So, um, anything else you guys want to cover? Are we done? Yeah, actually, just a very quick one, very quick question about um, you know, looking at some of the guys who did well again in the IPP. You see photos that um, you didn't see before, that they kind of kept on the side, especially for those competitions. And then you see a photo that you've seen online like 50 times during the year. So how do you guys go with this? Do you? So I know, Lee, that you've entered with photos that you had presented already. And what, what about you, Antonio? Do you kind of keep pocket money on the side for competition? Or? Yeah, I... All, all my images for competition don't go on Facebook and don't go on any other media until in, until I get to the awards. And as a judge, do you think that if the photo that comes up is a photo that was everywhere online or that you've seen several times, do you think this is going to impact negatively? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's just you, you don't you don't you don't need oversaturation between before you get to the awards because it's not a good thing. People get used to your image. It loses the impact factor the whole lot. So, any of my images that I intended to put in the awards, no one sees them except for myself. So, yeah, okay, good question. Well, I'm I'm pocket money then for this year. The, the, other, the other thing I just want to mention too, guys, is that if anyone wants any images critiqued, I, there's a there's a website out there called Pro Feedback. Um, log on to Pro Feedback, create an account, and you know there's there's Photographers such as Christian Fletcher, Peter Eastway, myself, um, Daniel Capabianco, Jackie Rankin, Mike Langford, they're all on Pro Feedback. So if you want some feedback on your images, upload it on the Pro Feedback and, and select your photographer that you want feedback from. And it's a great resource. So. And uh, is that how expensive is that? Um, it's not expensive at all. Some, like, there are some photographers that are doing it for nothing, and there's some that are doing it for about you know five or six bucks each or something. So it's not a lot of money. Yeah, it's a good exercise, I guess. 
Yep. So maybe we shouldn't be showing you the impact ones and uh, go for one of the non-judges. Well, legally, that if I see one of your uh, images for the awards, I, I've got to step away. I can't judge it. So. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Good to know. Thanks, Jerome. Um, I think Tom Putts just joined us, but he's a bit late. So um, I don't know if he wants to say hello. No, maybe not. All right, thanks, guys, for joining us. Um, we'll wrap it up there, and I'll speak to you soon. See you, Lee. Thanks. Cheers. Oh.